Hello and welcome everyone. Another brand new episode of Let's Talk Sports. So when this World Cup started around one month back, especially after the heartbreak of 19th November 2023, I had made myself a promise that no matter what, I would not get involved as involved in this World Cup as I was back in 2023. Less than 24 hours into the final, here I am wearing the Indian jersey, tricolor behind me, can't wait for the match to begin. Such is the passion of following the Indian cricket team. Now, with that in mind, I think what I wanted to talk about was specifically five different points that I feel would probably be in everyone's mind going into the big final. So let's get started with that. Now, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the coin toss. Now, the reason I think Coin tosses are anywhere very important in such matches, big matches, but I think it is all the more important considering it's India versus South Africa. Now, both the teams have not had very good recent histories of playing in big ICC tournament matches. India has obviously faltered for the last 10-11 years with the Champions Trophy in 2013 being their last crowning ICC glory and South Africa, we all know what they have been doing and what their history is. So with that perspective or with that point of view, I think it's very important that both South Africa and India probably would have a psychological edge if they happen to do what they want to do after winning the toss. And I think that's why it becomes more important. And I think both the teams would effectively want to do the same thing going into the toss. And I think that's batting first. India has recently shown that they are more comfortable batting first, putting a score on board, the semi-final or last year's World Cup, One Day World Cup final. South Africa, we all know, are historically not very good chasers. So they would also want their batsmen to play with freedom and ensure that the bowlers take on the heavier mantle of defending a total. So it's important and I think whoever wins the toss would probably start with one foot ahead of the other going into the match. That brings me to the second point of mine and I think it's a cliche that we used to use back in the late 1990s when we used to have India versus Pakistan matches. That is, it is our batting versus their bowling. And I think that's how we can best sum up this India versus South Africa time. South Africa has a very, very lethal and potent bowling attack in Rabada, Norkia, Shamsi, Maharaj and I think the one that I fear the most, Marco Janssen. I think India has again recently shown that they are a little susceptible at the very beginning uh, to a left arm seamer. And if it's a six feet, four inch giant, I think we better be more careful and a little more worried. So I think at least I would be keeping my fingers crossed for the first two overs of Janssen. And I hope that there are not major dents in the early on in the innings for India. That brings me to my third point and that's I think the question that's there in everyone's mind that what is the role of Shivam Dubey. Now I think I made a video last time also about Shivam Dubey's role and inclusion in the team but keeping that aside I think it's fantastic the way Rohit Sharma and Rahul Dravid has backed him but the challenge I see or the concern for me again is that even in the semi-final you were not very comfortable or you were not at all comfortable to send in a player like Shivam Dubey whom you have selected in the team as a spin basher and he was uh, not let out in the park when there was Adil Rashid and Liam Livingstone bowling in tandem. Now if you cannot back the player's strength then I'm not sure what you are doing at all. There's no point uh, backing a player just for the sake of it I would not be surprised if Shivam Dubey is there in the 11 again tomorrow, but I would probably be a little more happier if there's someone else walking in. And uh, just to say that my, many people will say that in big matches, you don't make changes, you stick with whoever you have backed so far. But I think I can quote examples like Srishant coming in the 2011 World Cup final, Yusuf Pathan debuting in the international arena in 2007 T20 World Cup final in place of Virendra Sehwag. Both of them were forced injury changes, but still players have debuted, combinations have been broken and it's just the need of the hour. It's tournament play basically. That takes me to my fourth point 
and to another member of the Indian cricketing team who has not been in the best of his form, but we cannot cannot ever question the class of this man. I'm talking about obviously Virat Kohli. I think Rahul Dravid and Rohit Sharma has public may publicly made it clear that they are backing Kohli. They have even gone to the extent of saying that they expect big fireworks in the final. I am not a very huge supporter of that kind of talk in the press at least because I feel that puts unnecessary pressure on the player. But then again, Kohli is someone who marvels at pressure. He loves the big stage. He knows what he can do. And it's just a matter of one innings, probably a few balls if he middles it. I think that six, the last time he hit off Reese Topley, I think that was one signal. Unfortunately, he couldn't carry on. But I wouldn't at all be surprised if it's come at the hour, come at the man tomorrow. And Virat Kohli is up to some big things in the big match, in the big final. That brings to my last point. And that is about Rahul Dravid. Now, social media is a buzz with a hashtag called Do It For Dravid. And the reason that is trending is because it was Rahul Dravid who was captaining India uh, in the 2007 ODI World Cup in which India had to face one of its worst possible campaigns and group stage exit. And Rahul Dravid eventually after the World Cup uh, decided that they would not, the senior members of the team would not probably play the T20 World Cup that was scheduled a couple of months later. In came MS Tony and the rest, as we say, is history. Now, such is the fate cycle of fate and that Rahul Dravid would probably for the last time, at least in the current scenario, because he is not expected to continue, would be coaching or donning the mantle of the coach for one last time for India to, in the final uh, against South Africa. Now, what a beautiful poetic justice it would be for him to get hands in the World Cup, albeit a two T21, but in the same Caribbean shores, 17 years after that dreadful day. I think I still remember the day, it was somewhere in March, and a very, very sad day for Indian cricket fans. But then again, here's the chance of redemption, and here's the chance for Rohit Sharma and his men to do it for the man who has been an exemplary servant for Indian cricket. He has been a thorough gentleman, brilliant cricketer, legend of the game. And I think nothing could be better than have seeing Rahul Dravid watch aloft the trophy, watching, holding the trophy tomorrow in the uh, Georgetown Guyana ground. With all that, I think it's time to say goodbye. But we'll obviously have our eyes glued to the television sets uh, for the final. And let's just hope that it's finally India's time for triumph and India wins the second T20 World Cup. With that in mind, Jai Hind and do keep watching and please don't forget to like, share and subscribe.